All right, I'm here with traitor to Indians, Nimesh Patel. <laughs> 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 what happened, Nimesh? That's me, man. I don't know <laughs> what I did. I, I, this is a whole fiasco happening in India right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Muslims are beefing with Hindus. Hindus are beefing with Muslims. Uh, yep. Narendra Modi's basically allowing it. Narendra Modi's the prime minister. Mm-hmm. And uh, I posted... Uh, a shot of a bunch of people in Delhi, which is a big city in India, uh, beating um, a Muslim. And yeah. I said, Narendra Modi has blood on his hands. Right. They killed a lot of Muslims this week, right? I'm, I haven't been tracking all of it exactly. Yeah. Uh, I just know that uh, in recent weeks, uh, the anti-Muslim rhetoric has amped up, mm-hmm. and because the, the, the Narendra Modi's party is basically a, a, it's kind of like how Donald Trump's party isn't a white nationalist party. It's the same right. way Narendra Modi's party isn't a Hindu nationalist party. Right, but right, right. my understanding of it is that it is, yeah. and uh, there's a lot of violence being uh, born from that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I posted something like Narendra Modi's t- allowing this, and yeah. mad people went off on my uh-huh. Instagram shit, Instagram, po- which is such a weird place to have a yeah. debate, quote unquote. Right. Because usually Indians are just online being horny. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's like, yo, go to you porn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go to you porn, <laughs> I haven't <laughs> seen like. Go to my wife's Instagram page <laughs> and ask her for. <laughs> yeah, you know what I haven't seen on like you porn now that huh. you mention it is yeah. like Hindu fucks Muslim. Like, you know, oh, there's, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no interreligious <laughs> right, porn, right. which I think right. that should be a That thing. would be too much. Yeah, yeah. That would, like, no, no, no. We yeah. can't have this. That would start a riot. Yeah, for yeah, sure, yeah. dude. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. Let's make a I was, sketch. Oh, well, I can't. I'm not going to do the voice. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm not going to do the voice, even though I am pretty good at it. Yeah, you are pretty. I think you should do it. I don't. I'm not offended by anyone who does it. No. A good. I mean, look. Yeah. If you're making a voice, mm-hmm. it's. You're and it's bad. You're making fun of yourself at how right, bad right, it right, is. Right, right. And so I was just trying to jack off, and I saw <laughs> a, mus- a Hindu <laughs> woman being fucked by a Muslim man. That's pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds. You are Hank Azaria. Yeah. I'm talking Hank Azaria here. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But yeah, I mean, so a lot. Wait, of people so you don't out. think his Apu voice was good? No, and it was can, terrible. I'm, it was I terrible. can acknowledge. I'm, there's a billion Indian people. I'm sure one guy sounded like that. Mm-hmm. But if you talk to my dad, who's been in America since he was 17, he sounds more like me than he sounds like a poo. Mm. And it's just a function of the fact he's been in America for 17 years, yeah. or since he was 17. Right. Yeah, I mean, a poo's voice didn't bother me as much as it bothered a lot of other people. Mm. Uh, Hank is there, he can go fuck himself, but... Mm-hmm. Why? I mean, because that's a job that could have been given to an Indian guy. Yeah. And if it was an Indian guy doing that voice, it would be fine. Uh-huh. Like if it was Raj Kutrapali or Russell doing it, it mm-hmm. would have been fucking fine. But I think mm-hmm. Hank just took it to such a level. Where I was like, all right, man, you're clearly a caricature. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, that was really it. My problem with Apu wasn't the voice. It mm-hmm. was more like people had a problem with him being a there's only six actors that voice the simpsons though yeah no i'm i'm completely fine like i and when i say he can go fuck himself i don't mean like i'll fight him or anything like that it's like whatever dude you took a job and then you were told you're doing a bad job you step down fine whatever Mm -hmm. my problem with the poo wasn't the voice as so much as it was uh the fact that it seemed like people had a problem with the fact that he was a convenience store clerk. Uh-huh. It's like, that's such a stereotype. I'm yeah, like, yeah. yeah, but it's also real. My dad worked at a liquor. Well, my dad works at a liquor store. Yeah. You have a problem with that? Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like, he, he, his son does well for himself. He's, right, my right, dad's right. doing fine. Like, what yeah, is yeah, your yeah. issue? If Apu was a doctor, and I've said this on stage, like if Apu was a doctor, it wouldn't be a big everyone would have been fine with it, I think. Mm-hmm. But I think the fact that the voice was such a caricature and it was also a convenience store clerk, yeah. that's what bothered people really under their skin. You know? Right. And and you do have to look at it through the lens of like the time that it came out. And I mean, Apu was kind of the only Indian on TV. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, so. it was, it was what, 80, I don't know what year he was born into The Simpsons, but it was like, mm. that was people's first Indian person they saw on yeah, TV. Yeah, it's yeah. like, ah, that is how they, you know, <laughs> right, so right, right, right. All right, I get it. You right. Know? 
I think Hurry had some points, but I also think there was a, a bit of balance that was required in the conversation. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so people, I posted this thing on uh, Instagram, and people went off on my comments, and they were like, yo, uh, you don't know anything about what's going on here. How dare you fucking say this? Mm -hmm. You lost a fan. Mm -hmm. Some guy emailed me saying, you're a traitor to your people. Nice. I was like, oh, thanks, dude. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> I'm a traitor to a billion people. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> the nice thing about that is, yeah, there's more of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, like, I've argued about this with my mom, mm -hmm. you know, and my, gran my grandparents were Brahmins, mm -hmm. are Brahmins mm -hmm. from Gujarat, which is... That's the, the good one, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the high, yeah, the good kind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, that's like the top of the caste yeah, system. If you believe in that whole system, that mm -hmm. which my grandparents did, mm -hmm. uh, they are from Gujarat, and they're, my grandfather is a Brahmin priest, which is like the highest of the high Brahmin you could be mm -hmm. from Gujarat, which is where Narendra Modi's from, mm -hmm. and they are Modi stands. Mm -hmm. like they believe everything Modi does. Yeah. My mom is so a So how did your father end up selling hot dogs and lottery tickets? <laughs> 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 Not hot dogs and lottery <laughs> tickets. Hennessy and lottery Hennessy, tickets. Right, right, right. Um, my How'd your father end up behind bulletproof glass <laughs> in the in the poorest neighborhood in New Jersey? Yeah, I don't yeah. look. My so my my parents divorced when mm -hmm. I was two. Okay. My biological parents divorced, and my mom remarried uh, in, in like a love marriage to a person of a quote unquote lower caste. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a that's whole bad. that's a whole nother issue. Mm -hmm. In so uh, your mom's father was the Brahmin priest. Yes, my mom's father was a Brahmin priest, and. Uh, uh, so they're all Modi stands. They're all like Hindu okay. like stands, whatever. Okay. So like I've Tulsi argued. Tulsi is too, right? What Tulsi Gabbard is? I don't know anything about Tulsi Gabbard. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry that I thought no. you did. <laughs> I mean, beyond the fact that she was an Indian uh, who ran for president. Yeah. Um, and still running. Still running. Still hanging on. Really? Yeah. yeah. She didn't drop out officially. No. Good for her. That's the Hindu way, man. You just hold on until fucking God sends you a sign that you should quit. And I guess God hasn't sent her one. But I fought with my mom about this, about like, yo, it's not right what's happening to Muslims yeah. in You're like, India. mom, I'm in show business, okay? What's that? You're like, I'm in show business. <laughs> I'm you know, in they're, show. They're hot now. Right. <laughs> yeah. Muslims are coming up. You have to pay their respect. But yeah. also, like, um, she, she clapped back like, yeah, but what you're hearing is uh, propaganda from the Muslims. I'm like, mm -hmm. what? What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know, yeah. yeah. Don't beat us to death is propaganda. Yeah, yes, she's yes, she's je like it's so odd to see the parallels between what's happening here uh, with Trump mm -hmm. and like the brainwashing of his fan base. Yeah, and yeah. what's happening with uh, uh, Indian Americans, like yeah, old, yeah. Na old older generations, and the brainwashing of them. Right. And I'm like, mom, you can't believe everything you have to see what's happening and yeah, on top yeah, of that yeah. it's weird because my mom's a devout hindu my grandparents obviously devout hindus i'm like what is hindu about allowing violence sure you know like yeah, what, yeah. You, how do you separate how do you fucking yeah. reconcile those two things you're mm -hmm. you're peaceful but it's okay to like beat muslims and then my mom's like well they you know cause all this beef with us i'm like yeah yeah, yeah. what the what are you talking about? I know. Do you, it's That's so funny because the last time I was home, my mom goes, you know, I'm reading this, but I'm reading it with an open mind. And it was a fucking Ann Coulter book. <laughs> it, was, it was called, it was an Ann Coulter book called Mugged. <laughs> America's like race hustling or yeah, something. Jesus Christ. Reading it with an open mind. Uh -huh. But I did send her a Cornell West speech today. Uh -huh. She finally got an iPhone. Uh -huh. So I can send her Cornell West videos. And what happened? Did she, she said, I'll watch it with an open mind. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she said... I read mugged. I didn't want to be mugged. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She's like, ah, she calls the cops. <laughs> There's a black man on my phone. <laughs> and he looks like a crackhead. <laughs> Don't let him into his own house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, she throws the phone out the yeah. window. <laughs> That's great. It's so funny that that guy, yeah, that guy's, uh, it's funny that he can look like that and, and do what he does. Cornell West? Yeah. Man. I yeah, love that guy. OG. Yeah. Sure is so. Um, oh, so, but you said you argue with your mom. Yeah, I argue with my mom, and it's it's well, she's sixty something, so yeah. it's got it's a pointless argument sometimes because yeah. at some point your brain is not convincible. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't have the time or, or the energy to uh, commit to convincing her some other thing. It's more like, all right, mom, I'm just gonna concede that you're wrong about this situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you just have talk your about own, something else. Yeah, you have your own personal experience it's mm -hmm. like telling someone uh who survived race riots 
that the side they were on was wrong. You know, like there's yeah. the, the the context of violence and right. seeing that stuff doesn't go away. Right, so right. Is the context different for her? I mean, does she have any experience with... Yeah, so she was in India um, in the 60s through... But uh, well, she was born in the 60s, but she was in India through, I think, like 80-something. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure there was lots of sort of sectarian violence that happened. And prior to that, you know, my grandparents were born in the 20s and 30s in yeah. India. And so they went through partition. They went through uh, lots of uh, Hindu-Muslim violence. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to say... All Muslims are responsible for shit, and all Hindus are responsible for shit. But there was definitely that kind of. Well, anytime there's like that much conflict on that big of a scale. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was definitely like, oh, we're all Muslims are be- like they they lit trains on fire, and yeah. and uh, uh, Hindus yeah, yeah, ran yeah. programs to get rid of Muslims and all this kind of shit. Yeah, and yeah. I wish I there's so much dense history there mm-hmm. from even from 1947 through now mm-hmm. because that's when partition happened. Mm-hmm. That to go through it all would be like going through israel palestine relations i'm like yeah. look i just see a high level of violence happening I'm yeah like, yeah yeah none of this aligns with what you claim your ideologies are right. of like peacefulness right that's really it that's my rub with the whole thing mm-hmm. i couldn't care less about uh muslim versus hindu mm-hmm. and like who's right and who's wrong it's like yo you just violence in general yeah just violence. Yeah. like what are you doing to each other yeah. it's fucking wrong yeah. india just makes me sad like as right. a as a test case for democracy, yeah, it's just fucking tragic yeah. what's happening there. Sure, I mean it, it's funny too that to think that there's so many because you look at you watch news footage of it and you look at pictures and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I mean, there's there's so many people. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, a lot of. I mean, it's a it's big a one point one billion people. Right, and that's almost China's a little bigger. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, soon to be smaller. Really, <laughs> nice. coronavirus? No, this is coronavirus <laughs> joke. Oh, okay, right, right, right. right. No, I um, mean, it, it is, when I think about it from a numbers point of view, it's like every kind of humanity is in India. If you have mm-hmm. 1.1 billion people, you'll see most everything. And that's like such a, 1947 till now is such a small time for democracy. Yeah. But because you have a billion people, a lot of things play out a lot faster. Mm-hmm. And so you're seeing like huge income inequality play out right, in like right, just right. 60, 70 years. You're seeing all this violence play out in just 60 to 70 years mm-hmm. because you have such a huge amount of people. And it just so happens that Hindus are a majority. So now mm-hmm. the majority is just wreaking havoc on everyone else. Yeah. And they have more power. And yeah, they've been I mean, yeah. they've been in power. I think my brief understanding of India's history is that. Uh, moguls who were in Muslims traditionally like ran all of India until the Brits came in and the Brits aligned with the Hindus and put Hindus in power because okay. the Hindus like sucked British dick and, right, and, right. and now the Hindus have stayed in power and we have what's going on now. But there's, I think India has 200 million Muslims. That sounds about right. Yeah. Two, 300 million. Yeah. So that's a pretty big, that's a pretty sizable amount. Of that's the, a huge of number, but you could put it up against six, 700 million Hindus. It's yeah. F- it, Small, you yeah, know, yeah. Still, two to seven, or seven to two, or whatever. I guess the point that I was making was I don't know if we really have that same type of um, conflict here. No, thankfully. I not. mean, I, maybe we're too diverse or whatever. I mean, I'm sure. Like, I mean, I'm sure people who are maybe it's between whites and non-whites. I don't know. Uh, I mean, um, I we had it in mm-hmm. the. 1800s for sure right like that's what jim crow was all about Mm -hmm. it just yeah yeah it didn't it's still a huge part of america it's just a lot more subtle yeah in india you're just seeing it happen a lot more i mean you can't what you're seeing is just a uh, a small representation of like the discriminations discrimination tons of people face on a day-to-day right like Mm -hmm. the the job like not getting a job the the like racism, like verbal racism, and all that kind of stuff that mm-hmm. people experience on a day to day. I'm sure we just don't see it. Mm-hmm. The violence is what we see. Yeah. So I'm sure there's like subtle shit happening. I'm sorry if none of this is funny, but no, uh, well we. I don't. It's a podcast. Yeah. If you guys want <coughs> funny? Why don't you go? Why don't you just, um, go watch Samantha B? <laughs> I forgot you right way you write for them. No, I don't. I used to. I used to work for them as a field producer, but no, I no longer do. Nice. So let's just make fun of them the entire time. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Hey, if you guys want to laugh, <laughs> watch the Daily Show with Trevor Noah. Uh, <laughs> um, but it's well, you were no, but you were talking about um the 
the sort of um uh the thing between like the part like you said you were talking about Modi's party mm-hmm. that he's not a Hin- it's not a technically not a Hindu nationalist party. Uh-huh. I think it is kind of funny how like because I follow a lot of like conservative Instagrams uh-huh. and they always have somebody who's like they'll have like a black gay guy uh-huh. and I wonder if they have that in in India if they have like a Muslim a Muslim like a like a, a pro- like a trans Muslim guy who's like <laughs> a, a uh, pro. Hindu Muslim guy, yeah, who just like Allah ain't shit. I just can't. Yeah, Allah quit. ain't shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hindu's way better. Yeah, yeah. A guy who dropped Islam to convert to Hinduism. Yeah, just for the money. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I doubt it, but that that would be a hilarious character. All right, let's write that character. We'll put that sketch out next week, just so I can okay finally be canceled in India. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get another email from like you are a traitor to your people once you a, again. You get a billion emails. Yeah. <laughs> your inbox just says yes. Yeah. Um, Nimesh Patel has emailed you. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were a disgrace to Nimesh's. <laughs> right. Jesus Christ. A <laughs> hundred thousand Nimesh Patels. Yeah. Like keep my name out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you are disgraced. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Patel family <laughs> disowns you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Patel what? family. What? <laughs> huh. um, how much of a practicing Hindu are you? I got the Gita right here, man. Yeah. Nice. Now, re- it seems I like a pretty fun religion. I, mean, I, re- right? I read it every day. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, it, fun. Sure. I mean, we have lots of holidays and, and practices, but I think at its core, it's about Staying peaceful, understanding God is everywhere and in everybody, um, and keep your mind to God at all times, mm-hmm. and at the same time, like do what your what nature tells you is your work. So mm-hmm. in this case, my work, for example, is like you know to write, mm-hmm. and, and that's what it feels like. And like, don't be attached to the fruits of your labor. So don't be like, if I do this, then this will happen for me. It's more right, just, right, like, right. just do it. Just do the do work. It. Yeah. yeah. Hinduism is Nike basically. Uh-huh. You know? It's just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. just do it. Nice. And then uh, Islam is Adidas. <laughs> yes, exactly. All day. I dream about. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm trying to think of other religions. Which one's Fila? <laughs> that <laughs> Which, was like a, a, a brand that used to be hot. Used to be hot. Yeah, and yeah, now yeah. it's like slowly it's coming, back. coming back a little. Yeah. Scientology, ch- yes, yeah, sci- <laughs> Scientology's champion. Yeah. No, it's Reebok. Yeah. yeah, no, but like that's that's the core tenet of Hinduism, basically. Mm. And then you know the whole idea that you shouldn't, you should be vegetarian, is because God is in every living thing. And mm. so if you destroy a living thing, then you are destroying God. In that sense, that's that's kind of where it comes from. And yeah, yeah. Like if I if I put my foot on a book or something, then I'm supposed to like apologize basically and pray because God is knowledge. That's mm-hmm. that's another tenet of Hinduism. And, okay. And so and the whole idea of reincarnation is that you are supposed to. It sounds awesome. Yeah, I mean it it, it is. I mean it, this is the, the only time. I mean I've never really like learned anything about. Yeah, I mean it or, the Gita's right here, man. Yeah. And another another tenant is spread it's, the and word. And it seems pretty short too. Yeah. It's, it's not like the fucking Bible that's like No. Oh, and then this lady got raped and then we cut these people's heads <laughs> off. Someone did drugs. We sold them into slavery. <laughs> yeah, no, a yeah. brother go killed out another and, brother. Or yeah, yeah, there's yeah. There's a baby that gets cut in half. Go out and take your slaves. God <laughs> yeah. says it's all right. Yeah, no, there's none of that. I mean, yeah, yeah. The, the the I haven't read the Mahabharata, which is the sort of whole text which is okay super long okay. the, the gita, gita like the is a, is a, is basically a, a brief description of god talking to arjuna who is a warrior who laments that he has to kill people and uh in this battle and god's like everything you're about to do i've ever has already been done i'm mm-hmm. with you at all times don't lament about death because death is inevitable um just keep your heart to me and everything will be fine and mm whatever your last thoughts are the, the the idea is keep your god keep your thoughts to god at all times because whatever your last thoughts are are what you will be born into into your next life okay so if your last thoughts are to god then you will go to god and you will break the cycle of mm. reincarnation so i'm going to be a pussy yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly if your your last thoughts are about <laughs> <You're> like oh <laughs> no i think about water and pussy <laughs> Come back as a giant wet vagina. <laughs> I'm gonna be a transformer. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's that. Those are that's my understanding of the text. Um, mm-hmm. And so, like, none of it says, 
hate Muslims, you know, yeah. it's yeah, like, yeah. It, or, or, or hate anybody, commit violence against somebody who is mm-hmm. not that you're, you're ideally supposed to just spread the word. Mm-hmm. And if people listen, people listen, if not, you've done your duty of spreading the word of, of, of the Gita. And, right. and I don't want to proselytize and be like, convert, you know? Yeah. It's just like, this is how I feel. And this is, this yeah, is what I yeah. think is right. But I don't think anyone else is wrong. It's sure. And that's that's what the rub is when I see all this shit happening in India. I'm like, how can you claim you're a Hindu but also not be okay with yeah. everybody else? Then I, but then I guess it's like, you know, you don't understand, and they're maybe they feel like they're they're under attack or whatever. Yeah, I, mean, I think it just comes down it it comes down to it's not a Hindu versus Muslim. It's more like it's it's kind of you know like black versus white here, like racism here is just a. a it's just a function of class. Yeah. It's like a class war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I it think doesn't ra- seem like it's like that over there as much. Yeah, I, I, again, I don't, I'm removed from it. You yeah, know, yeah. thankfully I'm in Brooklyn and not mm-hmm. Mumbai. But mm-hmm. uh, in that sense, like, I, I think there there's a lot more history of mm-hmm. religious violence. It's almost like an ideological battle. Yeah. Yeah. Here it's like, here it's a race war. It's a class war disguised as a race war. You know, like okay. race was... I just read Michelle Alexander's uh, New Jim Crow. Oh, nice! And she I've read that too. Yeah, it's great. I s- I, mean, I s- got like two thirds of the way through. It's great. At some point, book. she talks about how I, th- I would say like a halfway through, she says, you know, after after slavery was abolished, there were poor white people and poor black people, yeah, and they yeah. were all sort of working together. Yeah. And at some point, the aristocrats realized that if there were they more, they were going to get together. Yeah, yeah. and they would, you know fight the rich people Mm -hmm. if they didn't make the poor white people hate the poor black people Mm -hmm. and so they put all these laws in place and made black people out to be you know bad Mm -hmm. criminals and less than white yeah yeah and that's why that's how kind of racism right if it didn't already exist was like a new form right took a new form here and And then once you feel like you're above a particular group then you're gonna you're gonna believe it and you're gonna exactly you know it's i mean it kind of it does sort of like Sometimes for some people, I think that like that feels good. That power kind of yeah. feels good. At least I'm not black, you know. Like that's yeah. like a thing that white people says. Like yeah, but you're yeah. this. They have, you've been destroyed in the same way by the yeah, same yeah, yeah. people. Like I, that's when I think about Trump and I, I used to joke about how like rich white people do not care about poor white people. Mm-hmm. And then Chappelle did it like two years late, three years later on this thing. I was like, well, I guess I can't do it. But yeah. the the point being like rich white people have are the problem <laughs> they mm. have like destroyed every group of people yeah they've just made those people hate each other so they don't hate them right and that that's what's playing out that's what the rate i don't think that's played out as well in in india mm-hmm. hindu versus muslim but it might have been i don't know okay yeah it, it like it is interesting because they because i was doing some reading about this stuff and mm-hmm. it doesn't feel like yeah in america there's these sort of like ideological ba- these like religious conflicts yeah. i don't know what the root of that is or where that comes from i mean <laughs> you would just think that i don't know you would just kind of think that like if you if you found something if you found a religion that worked for you yeah. you would have your approach where you would just use it and enjoy it and not care about what other people are doing right so but but i don't know there must be some kind of like there must be some kind of um like something else there because I feel like anytime someone talks about culture or whatever, mm-hmm. that's always sort of like a veiled, a veiled sort of analysis to what the actual problem is. Yeah. Um, cause I was talking to a friend of mine who was like, who was, who grew up or- Orthodox Jewish and he said something about how like suicide bombers do what they do because it's ingrained in them and it's in their culture. <laughs> and, <laughs> like like he like he even knew when he said that 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 was like not you know the answer uh-huh. but Did his curls like spring up when he was talking <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like anytime yeah, he like, said like a dog like, yeah. yeah anytime <laughs> he talked about muslims is it fucking ear <laughs> his, his curls are sp- yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know they're mad <laughs> i just you just gotta look at their curls oh man that nice yeah, i mean that's we broke thing, the like, ice that's the the thing with that. The thing with I'm glad that you, I'm glad that we're being racist together. Well, I mean, whatever, yeah. man. <laughs> what, what what Muslim or Hindu fan is going to write in and say Michael Racine is a traitor to the Indian people? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. No, to me. No, like, I'm going to just take all your Indian fans. <laughs> Please, yeah. take take the guy that wrote me. Yeah. Uh, the thing that, that I talk about that on stage about uh, you know 
we try to install democracies in these places by dropping bombs. Yeah. Right. And it's like, if you kill my whole family mm -hmm. with a bomb, my first thought is definitely not going to be, I got to get to the voting booth. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. like, we've created terrorists. Yeah. That, that That's like a known thing. We create, terrorism is not a function. It's pretty, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not a function of religion. That's just an easy way to codify it. It's yeah. a function of the fact that, we take away people's food mm -hmm. <laughs> and tell them how to live their lives. And they're like, what the fuck? Yeah. I, I can't live like this. And yeah. then over, if that happens over generations, then it becomes a cultural thing. But you're removing the fact that everyone everywhere is the same if mm -hmm. they're hungry. Sure. Like we're, we're, hanger is a universal whole thing. Yeah, yeah. These terrorists are just hangry is the point. Right. Let's they just put some Burger Kings <laughs> in the Middle East. Right, that's maybe that's what we did in Iraq. We forgot to put the McDonald's in there. For you know? sure, dude. Yeah. That, who, 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 if we do it again, uh -huh. yeah. But I feel like that that idea of installing democracy places, that's not even like an ideological thing. I, I, I mean, I feel like that's the excuse of, of, of going that, in that's there. That's just capitalism. Yeah, it's capitalism. It's just capitalism being like, uh, we got to do this under some ruse of helping people we can't mm -hmm. just be like we want all the money that's there yeah you know <laughs> right, right, right. all the lithium <laughs> yeah, and yeah we want to go like yeah. i talked to a friend about this uh, a few weeks ago about what's happening in iran mm -hmm. and iran and the united states were friendly until 1979 yeah and then the uh there was the islamic Re revolution well that's when they installed the shah though right yeah so the the shah was exiled deposed after in, in 1979 there was the islamic yeah, yeah. revolution yeah and but before that, we were friendly with uh, Iran. Uh -huh. And then once that happened, Iran became a rogue state because it was no longer doing business with the United States mm -hmm. because Islam, the, the theocratic leaders there were like, no, fuck the United States. Mm -hmm. They're basically just taking all our resources. Yeah. Yeah. And we did an episode about this with, with uh, Bassam. Oh, awesome okay. Shaw. Yeah, I mean, he um, was a he was a, like a lobbyist for Qatar, so I'm sure he has. He, was he? I'm sure he has a a, a different angle or or very unique angle on the whole situation. No, uh, I mean, he said pretty much the same thing, and know? he said that like the the Islamic Party was the one that just they were just strongest at that time after exactly. the Shah was yeah, exiled. They, they they the I forget who it was the Ayatollah who basically said we're all in favor of um, a new government here. Anyone who wants to be progressive, please speak. And anyone that spoke basically just like had murdered. And then that's how we sort of installed this uh, more theocratic, uh, sort of oppressive regime. Wait, that was that was the Shah a after that? No, so the, the Shah was uh, deposed. Yeah. Um, and then the he, Ayatollah Khamenei. He said anybody can speak. Yeah, anyone can speak, any, like any other leaders. Yeah. The, in the power vacuum, uh -huh. he realized that he was going to take charge. And so he kind of basically fake outed everyone that would also want to be progressive and take charge mm -hmm. and just had them killed yeah and then that's how he seized power okay and oh okay inst instilled his um, will Blossom left out that part yeah yeah, yeah yeah um but yeah like it, it it's just resource grabs right like that's mm -hmm. why we com that's why we do sanctions muslims are always lying right <laughs> <laughs> yes that is my hindu takeaway <laughs> <laughs> uh uh that 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 that's what sanctions are for, right? We uh -huh. just prevent them from selling their resources and we right. prevent other people from giving them resources. Whereas like if we didn't have those sanctions, that country might be a flourishing, it was a flourishing place and mm -hmm. it was, it, sure it had lots of problems, mm -hmm. but uh, it was definitely on the up and up, you know, yeah. like they had, they, our main export to them is like all culture and, and TV and they, they have a huge exchange of uh, scholars and people that would like Iranian students, for a while we're like the number one people that would come here study and go back and like go back with their training and their education and like mm -hmm. spread their knowledge mm -hmm. and then we cut all that off yeah um, in 79 not uh, in that 79 but through through from 79 through now through, it's okay. like it's diminished a lot yeah yeah um and now like pharmaceuticals are crazy expensive there everything's crazy expensive there and yeah. sl the whole idea behind sanctions is to starve a country until they until the people revolt and, and destroy, try to fight their own government. That's oh, the whole. Oh, really? Yeah, that's the whole point of us doing that. Wow. And so I never knew that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it. That, that, that's sanctions are for that, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's why when Trump reneged on the nuclear deal, it was such a big deal because Obama's 
lifting of sanctions had had some positive effect. Mm -hmm. They take a long time to take in place, but immediately afterwards, people were like, yes, a new market for us to access. Mm. That's why, like, uh, Boeing took a huge hit when Trump reneged on nuclear deal because uh, Boeing had a massive deal in Iran to sell planes. Uh-huh. Every American country, every American company wants to sell to every... Everywhere in the world. Everywhere in the world. Every developing nation. Yeah, yeah everywhere yeah. in the world, right? Yeah. It's just a, it's a money grab. Mm-hmm. The instant you cut that off, you're like, yo, fuck, we can't do any business there? Right, right, right. And then people who are... Sanctions is like you can't do any business with exactly. that country. Yeah, you can't do business. Mm-hmm. And so... Uh, sure, there's ways around that, and mm-hmm. then people who own those black markets don't want those sanctions lifted, and so they cause their own sort of power grabs. Sure. Um, but anyway, Hindus are good, Muslims, jury's out. No, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know how we started talking about Iran, but um, yeah, that's what's happening in Iran right now, uh-huh. to my understanding of it. Yeah, I like to buffer everything I say with to my understanding, just in case there's some fucking nerd listening. It's like, oh, that's not actually right. Sometimes there is, but uh, we weed them out pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> fucking nerds. <laughs> well, you'll see a lot of comments of people who are like, yeah, I need a different podcast to listen to. That. These guys don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, bye. Yeah, go to Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> well, yeah, why don't you go read a book or something? Yeah. Or watch... Sam B. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Go watch Samantha B with all the virgins. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I love Sam B. It was it was a dope place to work. I'm, yeah. glad. I'm sad I'm not there anymore. But nice. Um, that's the funny thing is most of your enemies are are like nice people. Yeah, you know? most of your ideological enemies. Yeah. So you can't be too much of a scumbag. Yeah. Except <laughs> if I if I met Bloomberg, I might tell him he's a jerk off to his face. Bloomberg. Is the saddest presidential candidate to <laughs> ever. You know, it's just bot- it's like, yo, what? Co- First of all, he's so condescending too. Like I was watching him, some reporter. He had an exchange with a reporter, uh-huh. and just literally every single thing he said was like, was just like, like a, you the, know, the man's been a quadrillionaire for the majority of his life. Yeah, right. Like he's been a billionaire probably for thirty years, and he's got sixty billion dollars. Not. Mm. One like Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah. He's got sixty. He's probably what the fiftieth richest man in the world or some shit. Yeah. To me, it's sad that he's running with zero confidence. Yeah. The man has no con- like what? How tiny is this dude's dick? You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. How yeah. do you have sixty billion dollars and not walk just fuck off? <laughs> yeah, just well, because I guess if like I don't know if you have sixty dollars and someone tries to take a dollar, if someone you know, uh huh, you be you get pretty defensive. Yeah. So maybe that that's how they see it. Like I don't know. I, like I, I feel like th- I don't think that pairs at all. No, but if you have like a massive fortune and someone's uh-huh. like, I need a billion dollars, you're uh-huh. like, you're taking a billion dollars from me. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, it's still fifty nine bill. You know, like to yeah. me, I'm, to, to me, us, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, but, but no, to me, what doesn't make sense is that you have sixty billion dollars. You should swag out like you have sixty billion dollars and literally say. No one can influence me. Yeah. I've purchased all these people before. I know exactly how to play politics. Like, I, I will fix everything the way, uh, like, I But then no, you don't get the votes. Yeah, I no longer need to listen to anybody. But then you don't get the votes. What I'm saying is, if he came out and said, look, education policy, I know how to fix it. Uh-huh. No one's going to influence my decision. I will listen to everybody when it comes to education policy. When it comes to like trade policy, I know exactly what to do to fix it. This is what the consensus wants. This is what's going to happen. Because mm-hmm. it's like the whole thing Trump ran on was the fact that he had a billion dollars and he couldn't be bought. And clearly he could be bought. Yeah. Bloomberg could run on the same thing and literally say, I, l- I have bought all these people already. Uh huh. No one can buy me. Yeah. I will. B- if I were Bloomberg, I would bribe every person that's in the running right now yeah to fuck off yeah and be like let's just all spend all of our money to get donald trump out of office but he has no confidence he's the fucking saddest billionaire uh, but, but, ever the, seen. but aren't are, are i mean are there some people who like won't play won't play ball with that like are there people who can't sure. be bought sure i mean i'm sure elizabeth warren and bernie are both like oh we, we can't be bought but mm-hmm. no one's offered them five billion dollars yet you know like, yeah, yeah. You know, like right. what, what do you, i don't think yeah, any I of know. us have any understanding. no one's ever offered me five billion dollars i don't no one's no one's offered me five hundred dollars yeah in a while. 
I don't think anyone understands yeah. the power of that kind of money. Yeah, and it's yeah, sad yeah. that Bloomberg doesn't even understand it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. he walks up there like, I'm a meek, humble guy who fucking uh, is just trying to leave a good legacy. I'm like, shut the fuck up, dude. You yeah, yeah. you call, stop, and frisk. Just yeah. say you're sorry. Yeah, yeah. Buy, like, buy Howard University and yeah, open yeah. it up to every part. Like, anyone can go there. You know, like I want you to see this interaction because it was literally like a reporter was talking to him, and every everything that he said to her uh-huh. was was condescending. Yeah, I mean, you have sixty billion dollars, and I'm gonna take your soda away. <laughs> you have sixty billion dollars, and you act like you have twelve dollars. It is mm-hmm. fucking embarrassing for yeah. a billionaire to fucking act the way he's acting. Yeah, you know, like. I don't know. I don't know, but it must it, it, like it must get to a certain point though. Once you have a billion dollars, uh-huh. it must be not about money anymore, uh-huh. and it must be about like I don't know your standing in the world or something or right. your rank or whatever. So yeah. like, That's yeah, I guess th- that we're saying the same thing in yeah. the sense that if you have sixty billion dollars, money means nothing to you anymore. Mm-hmm. Nothing means anything except like the work you do. Yeah, and if you have that much money, you can just come out and say, "Look, I will do everything that is correct." Mm-hmm. in what you but like you sure we'll fix healthcare this way mm-hmm. we'll do I'll, i will buy bernie and buy elizabeth and they will be my healthcare czars mm-hmm. i will buy uh cory booker and he'll be my fixing pharma th- yeah know, but like then that's not good for the other oligarchs i guess that he's running with right yeah but he's got more money than most of them yeah he's got all the money dude but isn't he sort of beholden to his class uh, sure, I'm sure like financiers are going to be annoyed, but there's more. Uh, but you're saying that someone with that much money could just sort of like use their money in a in a kind of a benevolent way. Yeah, w- someone yeah. with sixty billion dollars could be like, yes, we'll raise taxes mm-hmm. on people who have as much money as I do, mm-hmm. because I have all the money and I already know how to hide it. Yeah, and if you have X amount to X amount, you probably don't know how to hide it. And yeah. We'll raise taxes on you. Right. Like sixty billion, you have. Yeah, I guess why don't they do that? They're fucking. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, they just want more. I guess. I think the problem with billion. They're all fucking each other's kids. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure. I'm sure there's more pedo islands that are being run that you know went. I know per, that yeah. went pretty dark yeah, after yeah. after yeah, Jeff. Yeah. Like they're pretty just laying low. Epstein was just the beginning. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, but there's yeah, there's a I mean, lot of islands out there. What's that? There's a lot of islands that exist. I, I have. I mean, Bloomberg owns. Bloomberg was known as the mm-hmm. the uh, on, an honorary mayor of Bermuda. Yeah, really. Because he would fly there like every Friday on his jet. Yeah. To his ten million dollar mansion. I wonder if that's good for like the local economy of a small country when a pil- when a billionaire pedophile perches an island. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I'm sure it draws hey. other billionaire pedophiles to uh, uh, the land. Like, oh, this yeah. is a good place to evade taxes and the police. Yeah, yeah. Like we did it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I I I think Bloomberg's just a classic sort of billionaire um in the sense that he wants to keep his money and shit, but mm. it's o- it's embarrassing that he has no swagger mm. as a billionaire because if I if I had a billion dollars, I my dick would be out every day. Yeah. I'd be sort of like what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing, Bloomberg? Yeah, but then isn't there like so but when you're that powerful isn't isn't the only thing that can sort of like curb your power a little bit is is the numbers and the masses? I mean like if you did take your dick out, uh-huh. you'd have to pay people off. Uh-huh. You you have to pay a lot of people off and that's pe- people every day. People are cheap. Yeah. Right, right, right. Congress like these average these congressmen get bought for like 5 million dollars over the lifetime of their fucking right. uh Ten years, you know. It's yeah, like, yeah. F- what is five billion dollars to someone yeah, worth yeah. sixty billion? Why doesn't he just hand out fireworks like John Gotti? <laughs> yeah, go to just go to the hood and <laughs> hand out turkeys, man. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. What I are know. you like? This he's an idiot. His whole yeah. His whole staff is full of fucking morons. Yeah. Uh, who, like, I drove by their office on Atlantic Avenue today. Oh, really? Yeah, I was gonna pay a homeless guy to show his ass to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's everybody wins. Yeah, yeah. man. Fuck. Yeah. I don't. It's, this is embarrassing. It's like. Because I kind of like him. I like the fact that yeah. he's a billionaire and can't get bought, but he's yet to relay that. And there's no way he'd win a battle against Trump. Like, mm-hmm. he couldn't. 
I mean, actually, maybe you could. But like, you have one. I think saying you have sixty billion. But I feel like the 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 mindset that that makes you get to that point where you're a billionaire is the mindset where you're like, yeah, it's still about me. It's always about me. I don't think. I mean, it feels like he, he's not going to be like, okay, now it's time to help people. I think. Yeah, you're right. I think. Uh, I. Th- but that's that's what the the issue becomes with Bloomberg. Yeah. It's because like you have sixty billion. Mm-hmm. You can if you just came out and said, "Look, I've earned this money, mm-hmm. but now I'm ready to leave a legacy." You think he's earned it? Well, he's monopolized he's monop- financial yeah. information. Uh, earn is a difficult word to sort of parse around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I definitely think he deserves money in the sense he created this huge entity and uh, built a massive business and media conglomerate. Mm. Um, back when you know the Bloomberg Terminal is. An incredible thing in the in the world of finance. What is that? Bloomberg Terminal is a, basically a giant computer that's hooked up to financial services information in every financial services institution, no matter how small you are to how big you are. If you're trading anything, or you need financial services information like the price of bonds or you know some news that's breaking, you type it into this terminal and it pops up right away. It's like it's data. Okay. But every every from Goldman Sachs to the little bumblefuck day trader needs yeah. it and it costs thousands of dollars a month and it's a subscription service. Oh, it does? And yeah, mm-hmm. and there's quadrillions of them. Uh-huh. And that's how he makes his money. It's okay. like $10 billion in revenue a year or something. Okay. I, I forget the number, but, yeah, yeah. and that's been forever. Yeah, and you need to be a little smarter than a farmer to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, so I don't know if deserve is the right word, but yeah. he's definitely earned, he's definitely put in the work and now it's like, if he just comes out and says, look, I've done the work for this. Now I'm ready to do the work for the people. Mm-hmm. And my fortune is my fortune. And mm-hmm. I'm real willing to expend whatever expend amount it, of it. Yeah. yeah, whatever amount of it yeah. to make sure I win. I and just do feel right like these people. people don't like to part with their money. That like They don't like to buy. They probably don't like to buy things. That's the thing. It's like, w- what is money then? Yeah. Right, right, Do right. you know the value of money? Well, they th- also think they're never going to die, probably. Yeah. I, to me, it's like, what's the point of money if you have all of it and then you don't use it mm-hmm. and it's like you have if he spent 30 billion dollars on winning the election he'd still have 30 billion dollars right i don't know what 30 billion dollars is i'll likely never will mm-hmm. but i think 60 and 30 is probably yeah, close to good. the same feeling yeah of god yeah yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like right as Bezos is a fucking, I don't, I'll never get that guy or Bill Gates or Buff is like, mm-hmm. wh- how, what are y'all doing? It is kind of funny having that much money and you're like, but they're still drinking soda. Yeah. <laughs> they're still enjoying themselves. That's how we'll fix the people. <laughs> yeah. We'll get their soda out. I don't like this. Yeah. yeah if he had taxed instead of soda, like taxed the proposed, the, the, the trading tax that he proposed recently. Yeah. He w- would probably have gone down as a much better mayor. I mean, uh-huh. He won three terms, but that's because the, every finance person was like, "Yes, fuck taxes." Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, and he did a lot of rezoning, from what I understand. Okay, and like gave a lot of money to d- or allowed developers to destroy like fair housing projects. <laughs> <laughs> and just and just build a fucking axe throwing bar, or whatever. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. Sh- he has a legacy of being a piece of shit that gives yeah, yeah, other yeah. pieces of shit what they want yeah it's funny to look at giuliani and then and then him because uh-huh. it's like giuliani was like the fascist like police state guy yeah and then once all the once it was like you know once that was sort of quelled yeah then he was able to come in and just make it like a playground for i mean the city the sucks. Rich famous yeah, yeah. the city is uh when people say new york's the greatest city in the world it's, it's you haven't been here in a while yeah it's uh, the el- the the luster and it's full of muslims <laughs> Yes, too many of those. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, uh, the city has lost its luster a, a bit, and De Blasio's doing no help. But uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like the, the he's doing much. You know, I, but I don't know how he much of that seems kind of ineffective. Yeah, I don't know how much of that is a function of Cuomo and and all that kind of shit. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I like how we started with India, and now we're talking about like Brooklyn. <laughs> 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 well, let's get back to India. You want to talk about Modi a little bit, or you want to talk about? I I would happily talk about Modi. It's just I'm not as informed as yeah, yeah, uh, as some of my my haters are. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. No, it's actually good to kill them. <laughs> they have to die. You don't understand. I guarantee you, if 
if this uh, goes anywhere, there will be people who will cite specific violent incidences of like terrorist attacks and uh-huh. and, and will leave out Hindu attacks and, or there's, you know there's like a, a weird um, ability to claim one thing but ignore the other thing that happened. Sure. Like the the Muslims did this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, well Hindus did that. I mean, what what right. are we talking about? Violence on violence begets violence. You know, it's just dumb. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like you got to stop it at some point. Yeah. What are you fucking doing? Like, yeah. read, go back to your book. And they all look so much alike. But that's the that's with white people too. Like, you, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hindus but, and Muslims point, can get along. Just look yeah. at Mango <laughs> Bay, the podcast. Like, Pranav is a Hindu, and Usama Siddiqui is really Usama Siddiqui. Like, yeah, yeah. they get along. Yeah, yeah. They're best nice. friends. Yeah. You know, there's proof in the pudding that we can get along with each other. Well, it was funny because Deb and I went to Croatia a few years ago, and I went to this uh, I went to this war photo museum. Mm-hmm. By myself, of, of course. course. Yeah, because, yeah, she was like, I'm going to lay on the beach. And I was like, okay, cool. There's pictures of dead bodies that I want to go look at. <laughs> right. And I was so glad that she didn't come with me because I was like, I literally can't imagine you enjoying anything less. Right. Sometimes you just, you just want to be alone and look at, you know, war photos. Right. But anyway, so, so they had <laughs> <laughs> so they had pictures from like the Croatian War for Independence and then the Bosnian Civil War. And, you, and you're just looking at these photos and it's like. Okay, I guess this guy's a Bosnian Muslim. This person's an ethnic, uh, a, a Serb who are Orthodox. This right. person's a Croatian who's Catholic, and they all look exactly alike. And you, you just, I don't know. It's hard to. So there must be like, I don't know. I guess there must be an economic thing or, or whatever. But um, it's just funny to see to take to, to take a step back from it and see people who, I mean, at least look the at, same and they fucking hate each other. Yeah, I mean, at least you know over here. The people who hate each other look different, <laughs> <laughs> so it makes more sense. Yeah, for now, <laughs> yeah, for right now, right. You know, I mean, at least like Italians and Puerto Ricans don't look alike, <laughs> <laughs> so they have a reason to hate each other. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. You can pretty much always spot a, an Italian or a Puerto Rican <laughs> by the flags that they're always <laughs> by, the, by the flags they're that they're always wa- that they're wearing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> By the logo on their track jacket. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Filos or Pumas, that's how you know the difference. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, all right, you want to talk about our little bet for the election? Yeah, let's. Rem- I don't remember it. We made it at Che's house, right? I think so. Yeah, what was the bet? Or at the cell, I don't know. It was at Che's house. Yeah. Because we were, we were sitting, you were sitting on the beanbag thing and we were hanging out. Yeah. What was the bet? That Trump wins? I bet that Trump wins? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I still think he wins. Yeah. I don't think anyone uh, uh, can beat him, especially now that it. Uh, I don't know if, Bar- if Biden's going to be the nominee, mm-hmm. but if Biden wins the nomination, Trump definitely Tr- fucking Trump wins. will win. Yeah. Bernie's the only guy that could beat him. Yeah. And well, that's yeah. He is. We appreciate that. I, Me I, and the fans appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, I I would. I want Bernie to win. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's. The best candidate. I don't necessarily agree with everything he mm-hmm. does, but what don't you agree with? I don't know how free education will work. Uh-huh. Um, if that's still one of his policies, yeah, uh, I do think taxes need to go up on the wealthy for sure. I mm-hmm. think um, healthcare for all is a necessity, but I think there's a lot of things within healthcare. Having studied it for the last six months, uh, that need to be fixed outside of Medicare for all. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like there's a lot of things in healthcare that can change entirely and that don't require this whole sort of, uh, requiring people to get healthcare. Mm-hmm. Um, cause a lot of problems with healthcare is that it's privatized and the private equity has invaded healthcare. Doctors incentives are all misaligned. I could go on and on yeah, about yeah. it, but, um, that said, like, I think Bernie's the most viable candidate to defeat Donald Trump and he should have been the nominee in 2016 yeah but the dnc did back then by you know rigging it such a hillary became yeah yeah i mean i'm gonna go to milwaukee i think for the convention Uh if they do that again i think we're gonna have to riot yeah for sure it feels like it it feels like what's happening is it looks like the dnc is gonna make biden the candidate because yeah they're just gonna force because biden is the candidate for people who are socially liberal but financially like have money and Mm -hmm. they want to uh, the systems that are in play that keep like rich people rich yeah. to stay in play. Like 
There's sure. tons of Democrats who are rich and don't want to see Bernie become president because they don't want their taxes to go up. Is that the only reason, though? Because because like that that's that is what it seems like. And I guess it is hard to like understand the the system or whatever. But is there anything else, or is it just the taxes going up? I think it's just taxes, man. Yeah, which is c- kind of crazy. It's just the money. Yeah, like like. It's just money. You're going to have to pay a little more, and then people are going to be able to, like, go to the doctor. Yeah, exactly. It people, just seems nuts. The people, like, that's that's why my one of my two rubs with Obama was that he did not do anything to fix the financial system. Yeah. The shit that caused the crisis. And yeah, granted, yeah, yeah. that's a very hairy situation, and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the, the beef between Elizabeth Warren and Obama happened because uh, Warren was supposed to be appointed to a post- um, and Obama appointed someone else because mm-hmm. Warren was so anti-financial services mm-hmm. that they were afraid that Obama would lose that sort of lobbying group or that group of people that were financing him right. uh, if Warren got the post. Right. It seems like he picked all the wrong people. Yeah, I mean, but he picked the right people for him uh-huh. because he was still able to implement his sort of social pro- socially progressive policies without really changing anything underlying fundamentally wrong with the way American capitalism works. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think Biden will be the candidate for people who are like uh, uh, pro progress, but don't really have big changes in mind for Mm -hmm. financial services and for the 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 powers that be behind the scenes. Sure. It's just it's just such a weird pick because you think back to like July and Mm -hmm. it's like we had, you know, a black woman, a black guy, a gay guy, a a, a woman, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, well, no, it's it's this guy. It's just been him the whole time. Big, big tooth Biden. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, Pete Booty Gang, I didn't like at all in the first place. I I mean, not because he's gay, but because he worked at McKinsey. Like Mm -hmm. McKinsey is a consulting firm. Yeah. Yeah. We did an episode on McKinsey. Yeah. That like destroyed the economy. Mm -hmm. And now Pete's like, I'm a Democrat and I'm here for other people. No, you're not. You're a piece of shit. Yeah. Um, I think Warren's great, but she's too busy claiming she's running <laughs> for women and that she's native american you know <laughs> i love that indian lady uh yeah. you know kamala yeah. harris was great but she was a black person that was also a cop basically yeah. a prosecutor that put black people behind bars you can't run like that mm-hmm. and uh uh who else is i can't tulsi gabbard's a hindu so mm-hmm. there goes the muslim vote yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I, I bu- hey, they don't like us either. <laughs> okay, it's, let me it's, it's let me just, tell you something. It's just a uh, yeah. It's going to be sad to see if because Bi- Biden will definitely lose to Donald Trump. Definitely a thousand. He can't. He could not hold a fucking candle to that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Donald Trump is a phenomenal shit talker. Yeah, and Biden's oh, oh phenomenal. Yeah, <laughs> Biden's too polite. I know. To be fucking mean. You know, well, hold on later, son. You know, it's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bernie will just fucking school him with his old school sort of. Bernie's no bullshit. At least. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Bernie will destroy. And he's a fighter. You. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he fought a heart attack and won. You know, yeah. like, Biden is just. And I hope the DNC does not rig it the way they did. But Right. He beat heart disease. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um. Anyway. So Hillary Clinton calls out Sanders on delegates. Let's follow the rules. See, see, Don't die already. Fucking Hillary Clinton. She won't die for she's a long a, time. She's a fucking clown. Anyway, unfortunately, we got to wrap up because uh, I only got a meter, uh, an hour on the parking meter. <laughs> 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 well, uh, thank you, Mike, for having me. I yeah, hope, I hope you get here. some Hindu fans and and lose some Hindu fans. You know. I think we're going to gain the right Hindus and lose the right Hindus. <laughs> if you're the kind of Hindu who is curious about the world and likes talking about this stuff, you're welcome. But if you're the kind of Hindu who, like, tells Nimesh he's a traitor and asks women for their vagina in, in Instagram comments. Subscribe to his Patreon. <laughs> subscribe to my Patreon, baby, because that's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all about vagina pics. Anyway. All right. Thanks for being here. Thanks, man. You want to plug anything? Uh, Patel2020.com. I just put out like a mini healthcare special thing. Nice. Um, please check it out. Stand up and sketch and, and a field piece or two. Nice. Guys, I'll be in Des Moines on Friday at the, uh, I think it's the Funny Bone is the club down there. I'm doing two shows Friday night, eight, eight and 10. Um, I'll have a ticket link at some point. It's this Friday. You know what? If you want to be there, you'll find a way to make it. Okay. All right. Thanks again. Bye-bye.